Welcome to my Texas workshop. I'm Randy Lammers. I'm Aaron Keevan. This is Worth Knowing. Have I told you about my Uncle Mo lately? <laughs> well, as Aaron, you know, Uncle Mo is out there in West Texas with doing a lot of farming, a lot of ranching, and trying to assemble on a lot of different types of farm, farm equipment. equipment. Right. Yeah. Right. And we taught him about torque. We spent a lot of time talking about friction and talking about torque. And good old Mo come to, comes to me and says, but Randy, sometimes that just doesn't do it. I've got my torque wrench that you helped me buy, and it's not enough. So then I went down the road of where we want to go today, and that is secondary retention. What do you do when torque to load just is not enough? So we're going to talk about secondary retention and start a full series on this yep. and go through about three different episodes. So stay tuned on the future episodes. Yep. And today, specifically, we're going to start out with lock nuts. Lock nuts. That's right. I love lock nuts. There's so many different types of lock nuts, but we're gonna cover the basics today. The yep. ones that are out there prevalent, we see every single day. Yeah, there's so, only a few, so. Yeah, <laughs> only a few. So Aaron, get started with the old okay. tried and true one that everybody seems to know about. Right, so right here in front of us, we've got the jam nut. Now, what's important to know about jam nuts mm -hmm. is how they're installed. Yep. So a lot of people believe you would put the finish, a, a hex nut first and then the jam nut over top. In actuality, the jam nut needs to be installed first on that externally threaded fastener and then the actual hex nut on top of that. So Correct. very, very important as far as application. Correct. So the load, what happens with that is the load gets transferred from the jam nut over to the full hex nut. Mm -hmm. And then we just have that jamming interference fit between the jam nut and the hex nut. If you do it the other way, it's not effective. Exactly right, exactly right. Then we have the castellated nut. Yes, we do. So the castle nut and the slotted nut. You see these in marine applications all the time, holding propellers on. That's, that's one of the most, everybody has seen that application. So what you do is you drill a hole through the shaft, you put your nut on, you back it off to where then it's lined up with a, the hole in the shaft, and put a pin through there. Typically, it's a cotter pin. Cotter pin. So the one that looks like it has a castle turret on top is designed that way so that when then you wrap your cotter pin, you're not coming out here where the flats of the nut is. Mm -hmm. Now, the slotted nut's a little bit different. It's a little bit beefier nut. And so when you put the pin in there, yes, you do wrap on, those, on the uh, flats of the nut. But these are very, very good. They're definite, positive, retaining. They're as strong as the pin that you put into them. Yeah, for sure. And, and, help, and it's okay. You're still getting the same features here. You are. It's just one, you're, you're kind of hiding that pin in a little bit with that castellated That is correct. Nut, so. That is correct. Now we'll talk about the surface bearing type nut. So we've got a couple of different types here. We've got a serrated hex flange, which you can see the at the bottom of that, it's actually got serrations along the surface. Right. And then you have this Keps nut right here, and or K-lock they call that. Correct. So both of them actually work with friction against the bearing surface of your mating material. Correct. So it actually creates that locking effect once you've taken it down and torqued that down. Correct. The K-lock nut with the external lock washer attached to it gives one extra feature, and that is it's used a lot in the electrical yeah. application for electrical connections. It bites into the material and gives you a good electric yeah. contact. Yeah, it can knock a little paint off too if, if that's the case. So they use Absolutely. that in assembly sometimes. Absolutely, so it's yeah. excellent for that, electrical applications. Now, we go to then the prevailing torque lock nuts. Now, this group of locking nuts actually go ahead and when you put when you put it on the thread it starts to lock it's typically an interference with the thread and creates a prevailing torque going on and of course coming off so we have those that are center punched so the thread has been deformed in the center of the nuts by punching it right in the center of the nut then you have the top lock nuts which are basically uh, uh, elliptical in shape so 
They, they actually squeeze the nut or punch the nut at the top of the nut. You'll have either the oval shaped or the flat, flat top and that it, uh, creates an elliptical shape. So when that goes on to a round threaded uh, external thread, it creates that prevailing torque. Now there's something really, really critical I want you to know about the all metal prevailing torque lock nuts. They must, must, must be lubricated. Yep. If they're not, Aaron, they start galling. Yep. And we get this all the time where customers will call us back and they're saying we're breaking bolts in torsion and went, okay, let's take a look at the lubrication on these lock nuts. They'd be properly lubricated. That's so exactly right. Wax, exactly they standardly right. come with a wax on them. Yep. And this, I guess, continuing with this all metal, mm -hmm. we have the flex type. Yes. So this is really, this is really cool. Right here. The top of the nut, and actually acts like fingers at the top, and it grabs onto the external threads, and it acts like a spring. So it's, it's a completely unique type of locking feature. It which is. is. It's just awesome. So. Yep. Unlike the uh, the other all metal prevailing torque lock nuts, the flex lock nuts has excellent, excellent repeatability. Repeatability. Because repeatability. every time you uh, disassemble and reassemble the all metal lock nuts, you lose some of that prevailing torque. It straightens it out. The flex lock nut it takes a lot more uh, uses for that to happen because that spring action continues yeah, to it's spring. Up to Fifteen times that we'd see that. Typically. Absolutely. Then we have what we call the nylon insert lock nuts. Now this is probably one of the most popular, very economical lock nuts. Yes it is. And it has a nylon ring mm -hmm. around the top of the nut. So it's free spinning going on until you hit that nylon ring. Then your external threads begin to form into the nylon. The nylon has a memory. It wants to go back to its original shape. Exactly. It kind of grabs that. So. The all metal lock nuts, they have specifications that require testing uh, that says it must give uh, be at this torque at certain first on and first off. That's that prevailing torque we're talking about. So again, excellent lock nuts. Nylon nuts are very, very popularly used. If you have high heat applications though, you have to use the all metal lock nuts. Nylon is only good to about 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Yep. So anything beyond that, look at all metal lock nuts. All right, Aaron, those are the basics. Let's put some of these to the test. You ready? Right. Yep, let's go. Okay, so what we have here today is a Yunkers demonstration machine. I want to give a special shout out and thank you to Heiko Fastening Systems for allowing us to borrow their machine today to do this episode for you in this test. And so what we have is the way this machine works is with plates that give you a transverse vibration. We're going to start off today with just a finished hex nut and that's our starting point to kind of gauge against. Okay. And what we've done is we've put a line on here mm -hmm. so you can see exactly what our setup is and you can see the movement of the nut as well as we will graphic. Yeah, that's right. So just a, a word to the, our audience, we're starting at the same preload each time. And what we're going to test today, is just what we talked about earlier, we've got a jam nut, mm -hmm. top lock, a nylon insert, and then we're going to do a surface uh, bearing finish friction type. Serrated. Yeah, serrated. Okay. So I'll standing. Well, I'll tell you what, that's pretty much the test. Let's get this done and let's show what these nuts can do. Yep. Gotcha. All right, there it goes. All right, that was our standard nut. So as you can see with a standard nut, you get movement really pretty quick. Yeah, absolutely. So our nice. next setup is going to be the jam nut setup. So Aaron kind of described this already. When you put the jam nut on first, mm -hmm. you torque that up to about 50% of what you want. Then you put your standard full height nut on. That nut by itself, that nut then gets torqued to your full load. So we've done that. We've put our line. Let's run this test. All right, yep. Got you going here. See what happens. You can see the jam nuts moving a little bit on this side. I can see it on the line. But it's holding okay. Okay, so we saw minimal movement. Mm -hmm. So really a great improvement. It shows the locking capability of the jam nut and a standard full height nut when applied properly. Now what we have here is a top lock nut. And let's see what happens, see how long this takes and see if, what we get. See a little bit of movement on this side, but definitely much less in time. 
That's great. It's pretty good. I mean, you see that not didn't move quite as fast, I think. So the top lock nut is uh, used an awful lot in, uh, we see them in the trucking industry. Yep. So a lot of top lock nuts used, good nut. So now let's do the nylon insert lock nut. Yep, let's, let's go. Give it a test. I've already got it queued up. We're ready to go. I'm going to start it. A little bit of movement, not much. Stayed pretty flat. That's pretty good. Okay, so we have done the jam nut. We've done the prevailing torque lock nuts being the all metal top lock nut and the nylon insert lock nut. So kind of to finish this off, let's do a bearing surface lock nut and that's a serrated flange lock nut. So we have that keyed up. Let's do that test. All right. Looks pretty good. So minor amount of movement. So that is all of the secondary retention locking nuts mm -hmm. by far outperforming at the same load, just a standard hex nut. This is what secondary retention does for you. In conclusion, I believe I taught my Uncle Mo about secondary retention and using lock nuts when just Torque and clamp load are not enough for his assemblies. Yeah, need that secondary retention. So we talked about jam nuts, mm -hmm. right? So that jam nut we have to ensure we install that first, about half the uh, torque that we normally apply with a hex nut over top of that. Correct. Right, what was the next one we talked about? Then our castle nut that we see a lot on boat propellers mm -hmm. where you have a hole in a shaft, you put the nut on there, the castle or the slotted nut, put the, put the nut on there and put a pin through there yeah. Great retention. Yeah, that's right. Then we talked about uh, surface bearing nuts. So we had serrated hex flange and kept lock nuts. So those, uh, the kept lock nut, one of the features there, or K-lock we call them sometimes, Correct. was it, it could actually work as a grounding type of nut. So Excellent cool. for electrical applications. Yeah. Then you have the prevailing torque lock nut family, which includes the all metal lock nuts, be it a center lock nut or the top lock nut. Lock as well as the nylon insert lock nut that has the nylon ring on top. Yep, that's right. And then the last one I think there is the uh, flex type lock nut, so. Yes, yeah. yeah, it has the fingers, flex lock nuts. So, a lot going on, secondary retention lock nuts. Secondary retention with various types of lock nuts and they're all worth knowing. Make sure you watch the rest of our series on secondary retention and we'll see y'all next time.